Yes, Montreal, I'm coming and get you. And then after my quarantine around June 15, I should be able to do instead of see you soon on Zoom, I'll be able to do see you soon in my room at the Crew Collective for June and July. And my planning right now is it's about three to maximum four months in Montreal, settling up things, and then go try to see my client in Austin, Texas, uh, do some trial in Phoenix, Arizona, and surrounding, and maybe also in, uh, in Florida, because some of my New York clients are now moved into, um, and now, yeah, they're moved in, into uh, West Palm Beach most of them and some other in Miami so the wall is changing and we are going to talk about it so I call that video the green attack Bitcoin on their green attack and I don't want to make or give too much attention to uh, Sir Lord Cyberg Elon Musk so again, I won't do a too big intro because we we're gonna leave what we could have done. Uh, we did about 20 some minutes before the outbreak. So thank you very much for your patience. And I'm really happy to welcome 35 new subscribers here on YouTube, my channel to, to talk about everything, business agility, conscious leadership, and also decentralized finance, but now decentralized everything, digital identity that require a private peer-to-peer type of aspect. This is why I think we talk about physically no one should be uh, actually uh, having his data centralized into one machine, one cloud, one everything. It should be distributed at least, at least distributed. And, and again, and tomorrow for those who are watching right now, please say I tell me in the chat, the, the my follower on YouTube, you are seven right now, tell me if the music is too loud, if everything is okay, you are acting as my register, register, register. So, Coach AF here, and um, and I'm gonna do my thank also for the some emails and donations that I receive. Uh, even they continue to give me some bitcoins and Ethereum. So, thank you very much. There's Thierry Escliff and uh, Janine Bes Bescaldati. We're gonna thank. For their bitcoins they sent me in the last two weeks they are subscriber of the youtube channel uh, they didn't have any question to just say keep up the good work on what you do on the decentralization of everything so you see people request the centralization they give me a couple of centium bitcoin as a donation to support me and the amazing thing is everyone who is giving me donation right now or to my team because it's not just for me uh, it's all stranger to me but actually they are stranger but they're going to be part of this network of people who would like to create a new world of love. Uh, let love free. Hello, Rica, Rico Blanco. Rico Blanco, by the way, on Instagram, let me tell you, if you want to see me again, I'll be uh, back in Playa del Carmen around the 26th and the 27th and 28th of May. So uh, we might have a chance to uh, meet in real and physical person. I will be in the middle of a... Oh, actually, it will be the post notes of this incredible The Greater Reset. Yes, tomorrow at the same hour, I'm gonna test all the equipment with a bigger network somewhere here to see how the watch party gonna have because we are going to have a kickoff watch party on May the 25th uh, for about three hours. So there's already 89 subscribers uh, for this. What we play is a scrum beer. It's gonna be a watch party for The Greater Reset, the people's reset, uh, the alternative to The Great Reset. Uh, your alternative for the decentralization versus the centralized way that the Davos people and these kind of Switzerland elite they want to impose on us. Here we are talking about creation of freedom cell because our birthright is to be free. We are beautiful, we are powerful and we are free. So let's rise up in vibration, all of us together. And this is it. Right now, before going back to um, Jasmine and um, Thierry that gave us some bitcoins to continue. So as I was saying, 
before saying hi to Rico Blanco, a very nice gentleman that I briefly met at Playa del Carmen and I uh, hope to meet again. Um, you have to understand that right now, of course we title this Bitcoin under green attack, but there's more to it, there's more to it because every decentralization movement, every self-organized community movement, every body of individual and collectivity that want to be free and independent will be under attack within the next 24 to 27 months okay and this is no conspiration this is no this is absolutely no so stop telling people they are conspiring and even those who are claiming to be part of an elite a financial elite, a political elite, uh, those who invent uh, fairy stories about uh, groups. There's groups out there, there's pressure group, but there's group for any scales, and business and economy and sociology, uh, workers union and everything. So of course everybody is trying to, what they, what they do try to do, they always try to take their place and sometimes more than their place. So these uh, pressure group, some are more organized than others, some have better means than others. But calling them elite is totally wrong. Because for me, those who control, uh, the word control is more important here, so they are controller. They control the central bank, they control the media, they control, so they are now elite. They are controlling the flu of money, the flu of investment. Uh, this is the central bank, this is the settlement bank. And right now, they saw us since 2009 and growing and growing, they saw us winning. So what do you do when you saw something, a very great idea that is winning? And taking share of your market, taking share of your revenue stream, taking share of the way that people have alternative to your centralized Nationalize, privatize, whatever. It's centralized. For me, privatize, own, like the Fed or any central bank in Western civilization. Civilization, again, should I say society? So, again, welcome on YouTube for the five, six people are there. So, please give me a like if you like it so far. Share this video to bring more people to the show. Yes, let's beat the algorithm. And if you watch the replay of this show of Monday, especially because of the outbreak that we had last Friday when I was starting to talk about Sir Cyborg Elon Musk. But again, I don't want to give him too much attention. And just, just let's, go, let's go back to Disruptor because for me, Elon Musk, I don't love him, I don't hate him, I'm agnostic, I think he did a great thing. But I saw something pass someday Unfortunately, there, it was not signed, so I cannot give the credit to those guys. But anyways, I think this is belonging to all of us as individual and collective. So the original list was taxis called Uber, a bad idea. The hotels, or the, yeah, the hotels, they called Airbnb, a bad idea. You have the music labels company that call music streaming a bad idea. And of course, Apple Music, they were the first, iTunes. The newspaper, they call the internet, especially the web, actually, a bad idea. The radio station called TV, back in the 50s, a very bad idea. And of course, I had my own stuff. The safe. Uh, safe scale agile framework scale agile framework yeah fucker they call enterprise crumb of Mike Beadle my late mentor for business agility a bad idea and of course the topic the core of our subject today tonight especially on a Monday night take back Monday because Friday we were cut by an integral outbreak here in Cancun the banks, they call Bitcoin 
a bad idea. And of course, I invest in investment firms since 2014 16, and especially with some countries as uh, part of the BRICS, huh? which was um, BRICS Brazil, uh, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. They start using and mining Bitcoin. So all of a sudden, the central bank said, oh, "Okay, let's let's give them some credit, some interest." And they made a correction in 2014. They made another one in 2018. And now we are all again in a correction. But remember, I told you something at the left: huh? the taxi, the hotels, the music labels, the newspaper, the radio, and then the safe and the banks. Oh, and I forgot the PMI, Project Management Institute. They call it Agile Manifesto a bad idea. So every of those organizations on the left, if you read it on a paper, it's going to be on your left. They are part of the old centralized mindset. Okay? They are part of a monopolistic mindset. They are part of a money scheme mindset. They are part of a Ponzi scheme mindset. They are not there for you. They are there for them. Okay? And everything at the left, originally speaking, because Uber and Airbnb, you could say a lot of things right now because they could become into a monopolistic Apple Music. They have become a monopolistic and they've been disrupted by Spotify. But nevertheless, the thing on the right are the disruptor, decentralized, or and distributed kind of network mindset. And they are there for a better customer experience a better user experience and a better people experience. And decentralized will brought you a more autonomous kind of thing. And who's telling you it's a bad idea? Those centralizers. So now, because the fact that even if they say, oh, it's a bad idea, but people see Bitcoins working, Especially the what I call maybe in English wrongly because in Spanish and French it's more clear, but les sans banque that I translate by bankless, those without bank, those with no access to financial services, such as a couple of community here of native people in South America and Central America, the people of Africa, the people of India at some point, people of China outside of the big futuristic cities. So you have to understand like the bank less, we're more than happy to have a kind of a ledger, huh? a wallet ledger to actually balance the transaction things. And for people in the Western uh, and Northern countries, that was also another means, especially for the, those who like we call olders, those who see it like, okay, let's transfer some fiat money, fiat money, for those who are new to it, it's all the currency like US dollars, Mexican pesos, and other currency on any devices that you transfer it to cryptocurrency and of course Bitcoin is the real McCoy and yes I'm a maximalist no means for you to recall it in the comment below but actually comment anything below and even treat me as an asshole if you'd like I don't care because I'm not scared and I'm proud of who I am I'm proud of who I've become and I'm still improving myself so the constructive comment to tell me about how I could improve my speech and this and that and my ways and if you'd like to suggest some subject on business agility, cryptocurrency and so on, welcome. And of course, the editor, you're welcome because you help also the algorithm to push it further. And thank you for the like on YouTube right now. And if you watch the replay, give me a like, subscribe, hit the bell and let's make it happen. Let's make it happen because more of us, it's not just about me, it's not about Coach AF. It's about, we all live this as an individual and we have to be a sovereign individual. And when we are powerful and beautiful as a free sovereign individual, we could create community that will be beautiful, powerful, free, and then sovereign. And this is what they don't like. And this is why coaching people to get their first wallet, to purchase their first Bitcoin, and the last three, four weeks, that was the alarm systems because a couple of us in Playa del Carmen and Tulum and other part of the world as well, we looked at it and said like, what's the problem right now? When we create uh, a wallet, uh, even the native one or these new Coinbase or 
Binance things. Okay, hold on a second. I think we have. I think I don't know for you guys, but for me the music is a little too loud, like all of a sudden. So let me correct it. Because if it's too loud to me, it's probably too loud for you. Alright, sorry about this guys. I love to have music, this is why there's a lounge in my name, Agile Lounge, because I like to create a great uh, atmosphere, a great loungey atmosphere when I do uh, training and teaching at the Bryant Park, co-working in Manhattan. I miss those guys, hope you're doing well guys. Same with the Crew Collective in Montreal near Square Victoria. And actually I'm going back in Montreal, so be ready to have your ass kicked if you're a motherfucker in Montreal. I'm doing it with a smile, so, and it's my channel, and I dare, yes, I dare. So, back to the subject. Is it me? I've got to change the music, because I just lowered the volume, and it seems like maybe that's the music. You know, the, the, the megahertz, so let's, let's switch it, because I don't like this. So, let's go to our friend, Above and Beyond. It's going to be 432 megahertz, a lot better for the energy we'd like to spread right now. So I'm sorry about this technical things. I'm a purist, I'm a maximalist in Bitcoin. So we discovered the last three weeks and almost a month right now that okay. Printer, printer. So let's let's cut the music, I think. Alright, so so yeah, I can't wait to to be back in Montreal for these kind of reasons. So welcome again. I see a, a jump of five, six people on YouTube. Still nobody on IGTV, so who cares about fake books? So, so yes, yeah, since the last month, when we try to coach people, because we are not financial advisor, but we help people to get their first Bitcoin or their first Ethereum. And uh, we, we, we discover lately that the, we had more and more difficulty for those with a Canadian credit card or e-transfer to a, from a Canadian bank. So at first we thought it was like only a technical issue and we could redo it. And then I try myself uh, because I've got five wallets, three for training purposes with just a little bit, like maybe one hundred dollars each worth of Bitcoin. And I've got my real one since two thousand and nine. So I start trying to purchase new Bitcoins and new Ethereum, and I was blocked myself. And I said, like, okay, so this is not it. So I contacted some engineer that I know in my lab here in Tulum and in Austin, Texas. And we tried to see, like, is there another problem? And also we contacted, like, uh, those exchange. The exchanges are Centlex or MoonPay, for those who, who are in the known. And they returned to us and they said, like, yeah, it seems that the bank in Canada have now a discomfort. Because I'm telling you, February, March, no hay problema. February, March, even April, we're able to transact with a, any card, visa issue from Scotia Bank, uh, even the Jardin, the motherfucker in Quebec, you know, the Green Bank, whatever, who have been stolen is 4 million, 4 million ID, SSID, stolen in 2019. People forget about it. Because it was too, it's an example why centralized data warehouse or even cloud computing with Azure is no good. You better have at least a distributed network and creating some kind of black lags if, if you're not ready for a complete decentralized, um, what should I call it? A complete decentralized blockchain type of ways. So, my friend, we I said we, the community of people who are not financial advisors, but we are experienced enough to know how to open your wallet, how to purchase your first Bitcoin, and to get you on board, because there was a frenzy, and I got clients as young as 21 years old who are very techy, uh, no I problema, you know, so they could like just jump in and, and create their thing, so they just need a facilitation about uh, the kind of steps to get there, but and they self learns and then they are autonomous as we like them to be. And of course we have the uh, older people like some of those baby boomers with at least an innovative mindset and they see the opportunity for them as having another means of exchange because the way I explain it to my coachee 
and, and I filter it with the half an hour free call, discovery call, we, we settle together that uh, if they see it as an investment to transfer it back to a fiat money, let's say in 10 years, I'm not there to help them because I'm part of the Bitcoin decentralized blockchain movement of a sovereign devices for the bankless, you know, for those without a bank, and for us to create community and use it as a mean of exchange when, if a collapse happened, when, if something's happened. And I find like the last week of April and since, since then, since about April 23, difficulty with US bank and US credit card and Canadian, especially Canadian credit card, to uh, open those Bitcoin account and wallet, even on the exchange. And then we saw like the kind of a rise boom of Ethereum and all of those little altcoin that I call new coin, shit coin. I don't care. Okay. It's good for playing the casino, but I'm not playing the casino. I'm in a part of a movement of decentralization again to give power back to the people. Okay. To exchange, to have a mean of exchange. So that being said, we, we saw the, the, the rise of especially Ethereum and they were pleased to start announcing that apparently, I don't know how, they should have to prove it to me and to my associate. But apparently, it's greener and cleaner the way they are having their server working to create the Ethereum into technological project in AI and this and that. Yeah, you see my face. And then all of a sudden, the spinning that the Bitcoin mining, especially that 70% of that is in China and Russia, uh, from the ex bricks Oh my God, oh my God, the Chinese and Russian are coming! And they are coming with coal. They are coming with dirty stuff, with COVID. Alert, alert, alert. And then there's Bill Maher, I think, uh, politically incorrect. I don't know the show now because I don't watch TV anymore. I barely watch TV in my life, except for the Mysterious Cité d'Or when I was young. So the thing, guys, is we saw three things. When we try to do training and coaching to help people get their first Bitcoins, we discover that a lot of transaction was blocked. A lot of exchange was blocked too, like between coins. And then this narrative of celebrating $4,000 US for the Ethereum and that uh, this guy is Russian born in Canada, or he was so more green. And then the spin on the media. And then the beginning of the fall of the US dollars as kind of a global standard uh, fixed currency. I, I don't remember even in French the word for this, but correct me, please tell me in the comment or in the chat for you guys who are live. Tell me because I'm, it's um, even in French and Spanish, I don't know the word that I'm looking for as the US dollar is the standard, standard something. Uh, anyway, tell me, please teach me something too. I'm not infallible. So these three things. And then when we ask the support of those mini exchange we um, we discover that we discover that actually the message from the bank was no we don't trust any of those transactions from especially MoonPay MoonPay gave us the clear things that the, the, the decline reason from Visa or MasterCard in Canada and some part of the United States was because they don't trust they don't entrust these transactions for the to go back to your ledger so that was the first kind of alarm that we had and then after so now we're gonna do some tests uh, maybe next week or two weeks in Tulum and also play the Carmen we're gonna see two or three other coaching and we are going to see if um, they could actually purchase their first Bitcoin with a Mexican bank credit card and if we are going to be able to open these accounts uh, because some other people are also trying uh, right now 
with uh, European and other crowd. But apparently, Southeast Asia is not an issue. Australia, it's 50-50. But really, Canada and the United States, they're kind of blocking it right now. So let me tell you right now that if if you uh, if you need to open an account right now, just look for maybe uh, someone to loan you some Bitcoin. And uh, if you could, like, yeah, because that's gonna be that's gonna be the. That's gonna be the way I think in short term. Because for those of you on LinkedIn and some other platform that don't know shit about like, because I have to say that like really, and I don't know if some of you because I invite a lot. Of, I, we made Samuel and I. We made a lot of noise on, on especially the French network of LinkedIn that doesn't understand a fucking shit again. And you guys are completely flurried dick. Like I think your your pineal gland and even your your brain like doesn't function. You just spread news that you don't even understand. You don't even question. We are no expert, but we have experience. And we know the shit we talked about. And we walk that fucking shit. What about you guys? I'm so sick and tired of those who have opinions. Without having any experience. That goes for the Agile coach. That goes for those who talked about cryptocurrency. They don't own. They don't own any Bitcoin. They never make a transaction of their life. And they are there to say like, oh yes, because cyber sir Elon Musk give a blow, and we went from fifty-five thousand US to forty-four thousand US in two weeks. Oh, a big blow! I bought mine at three fifty-nines. Yes, I have a lot of empathy for those who actually transited in the last two years at this higher price of twenty thousand and more. But let me tell you one thing, <clears throat> especially Bitcoin, the secure way of doing the Bitcoin, of exchanging Bitcoin. For the older, it's a risk. It's a risk like anything else. But that's the problem. And this is why we see in the Francophone network of Quebec, because Quebec, collectively Quebec, Quebec, it's a bunch of people anxious hypochondriac no matter why in 2009 that was the state and the world with the most vaccinated people for h1 and one and they're gonna reach their goal of 75 percent sheep having an experimental transgenic therapy injected to themselves because the majority of those people they don't want to take risks they fear everything. They are anxious. So, when you trade on the regular stock market, you take a risk. It's high risk investment. And when you deal and you trade with cryptocurrency and innovation, it's another risk. But that's the problem, guys. Since 2009 that I'm in the Bitcoin movement, the blockchain movement, moreover, because now we're going to take this, this all way, um, this all way up, this blockchain movement, we're going to take it outside of the financial for your, for your asset, hard, 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 digital identity other kind of transaction because it's need to be it need to be decentralized it shouldn't be centralized into the end of governmental institution or any corporation that will be totally wrong so let me let me break down three things three important key things right now that people say in our fake news first i heard since this kind of cyber attack this green attack the bitcoin server whether it's individual or a small team in the lab or it's a large scale like they do in china but of course in china 
those guys don't care about their environment. So probably, yes, they're using even coal to power their server room. Okay? Because they, they have like, for 100,000 years of coal. And beside the cities, and I've been in China, and I saw the real China, it's the fourth wall, it's not even third wall. It's a fourth wall. Beside Shanghai, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Wuhan, okay, in the country, they make them live like, it's incredible. It's incredible. The pollution, the everything. But nobody is, nobody is pointing them, eh? nobody's saying to India, oh, your pollution, no, 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 no. Nobody talked about all the other 8,000 cryptocurrency that they do some kind of equation and server mining, no. Obviously it is Bitcoin. And Bitcoin again, yes I know, 70% roughly for the information we have right now, it's mine in Russia, China, and probably a part of India, because they outsource. Um, even uh, China right now is able to outsource in Vietnam and India and uh, Bali, uh, what's uh, Indonesia. So be very careful, guys. And when they love Musk, it's just a guy. It's just another guy. When he purchases 2.5 billion, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, word of Bitcoin, he said, like, we're going to accept payment on Bitcoin. Yeah, we can have cheer up. But let's not, if we are for decentralization, we are also not to put all our joy in our, how can I call it, everything into one person. Tim Drapper, probably one of the richest guy in the Bitcoin movement right now, uh, who holds a lot of Bitcoin. He's not acting like the prince of Bitcoin. Mike Kaiser, who is a loud mouth advocate of the Orange Pill movement, I uh, get Orange Pill because Bitcoin is orange, like Agile Lounge, by the way. We don't, we don't have a singularity of, oh, the, so Elon Musk. Elon Musk, he created PayPal. Do you remember these guys? He created PayPal. And tell me, tell me is that polluting and is battery, huh? there's a lot of study about the battery of the Tesla. It's even worse, the waste of those cars, they not even equal the energy, the fuel energy that you save for the longest duration of five years, if you hold that car for five years. And by the way, to those mainstream media that I heard news that they are right now kind of... Uh, really <laughs> attacking the Bitcoin movement for this green effect of using so much energy to mine those crypto. That is going to slow down, by the way, for the next five years and even slowing down at the end of the decade. Have you ever think of the Google server all around the world? The GoDaddy server for so many corporate and personal websites, including the Wix website. Just Wix and WordPress. Could you imagine? Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, even part of the alphabet things. Huh? So, if we have to shut down the Bitcoin and blockchain movement, a decentralized idea to help people having a transaction, having an app. Uh, uh, a financial means to exchange in the third world country and so on. Well, I would like right now to decommission Facebook and Google. Just Facebook and Google. Let's cut it off on the server. Let's reduce the consumption of data gathering. Don't keep all the data in your server on Facebook and Google. You keep, I saw my Gmail, I've got my Gmail, I think, my first, very first Gmail, since, hmm, we'll say like 2000, 2001. My very first email was an Hotmail before Microsoft grabbed it, was in 1997. My Hotmail disappeared when the Outlook stuff happened, and I lost it. Orange Dolphin, I love this, Orange Dolphin at Hotmail.com, that was my very first email of the web after the BBS stuff, because yes, I'm online since whew, the late 1980s with, uh, anyways, that's another story. But my second email was a Gmail somewhere around in 2000. 
and they're still out. It's incredible. There's, I, I kept one email of that 20 years ago. It's still there. Facebook, my very first account created with my Arizona uh, University uh, email back in the day in 2003, 2004, at the very beginning. It's still there. Oh, but the Bitcoin server are polluted. Yes. Facebook, Google, just clear all the old unused accounts and liberate those servers. They won't consume energy. So that was the first thing. The green attack, it's a fake attack. I'm not saying that Bitcoin not create pollution, but comparing the volume of Ethereum mine compared to what's going on with the Bitcoin right now, and compare it to the World Wide Web, there's a gigantic polluter. All of those uh, server on the ground in Utah, Colorado, even in Quebec up north in Cecil and Becomo. You don't know that, guys? Huh? Yes, there's a lot. Hydrotron and Rogers have a lot of servers. There. So, excuse me, but all the telco, they will have to reduce their print, they will have to reduce their server consumption and, and cooling. The cooling is probably the most dramatic thing. And don't tell me that this Russian born Canadian Ethereum guys is of the coolest kind of server. Fuck that. Okay? Fuck that. You consume energy. Everything is consuming energy. Unless it's not free directly from the sun, boom, transform. Don't bother me with this. Okay? Second thing. Especially from my coach, and then we double check the information. People like the Dollar Vigilante, another fake news. Um, I don't know what the other source was, uh, Saphir, something in French. They start spreading that, oh, Bitcoin is now transparent. So, what's the definition of transparent? Bitcoin, since the white paper in the late 2008, before the first appearance of the real coins in 2009 and we could start transitioning it. Now, it's always been an open source, open space, transparent. However, it's the most secretive transaction between you and I. Everything is listed, everything could be transparent if you choose to. If you have your ledger, no police force, no government entity, no income tax entity right now could force you to provide your ledger. And if they knock at the door of, ooh, it's decentralized. So all the F, all the fuck, those apparently newscaster of the Dollar Vigilante and other goofy blog and website, at the same week that the Bitcoin movement, the blockchain movement, moreover, was attacked by the greener, all of a the sudden there was a question of transparency that now Bitcoin is revealing the list to any government entity or to any company. This is completely block. This is bullshit. Because no, no one, not the IRS in the United States, not. Canada Revenue, no France, I don't know the name, but no entity, public or private, could knock somewhere and ask for the transaction ledger. And as I said, I have five wallets. Two of them are very independent and whole. And even my exchange to say, is Binance or Coinbase? Of course I won't trust Coinbase. Coinbase will easily and aptly give your ledger. But then again, but then again, all Rossi, but then again, that will not be, that will not be um, on the, uh, how can I say, like, it's not all of your transaction, it's only what you did with your exchange, just as Binance or Coinbase, okay? So, again, anxious mind, fear mind, fear mongering, <gasps> the transparency, no. No listing, no ledger could be leaked. Of course, an hacker could 
track it somewhere but even though Bitcoin why am I a maximalist not because I'm a purist I'm a pioneer of this Bitcoin movement back in 2009 no it's not the case but it's also for those security cyber security reason for this decentralized way the fact that it's unseizable okay no one could force any of my wallet to reveal information there's no person there's no body there's no administrative council there's no nothing it's me it's me it's you and I we transition together and that's it so that was the second thing so first thing the greener the ecological people that attack the movement because apparently the way we mine the way we cool down our server is energy consuming second the lack of transparency and all of a sudden the Bitcoin movement who is commonly distributed and decentralized they are revealing our transaction list to anybody who asks for it. This is probably false. They could obtain some list, but not like this. Okay, not like this. And the third thing is Bitcoin gonna crash and disappear to zero because it's a conspiracy from Russia. I'm gonna give you a trend of what's going to happen. Now we're gonna have a correction and the fiat stock exchange market as well as on the crypto market. All of those goofy who created coins around Bitcoin, what we call the, the altcoin. Huh? What we call the altcoin. Okay, I'm sorry, I've got a problem with the music now. Sorry about this. It's really disruptive. Okay. So really guys, cryptocurrency, not digital currency. Don't be fooled. Digital currency is going to be the fiat money transfer into digital world for you to be tracked, centralized through your bank and your government. Cryptocurrency with the Bitcoin on top. It's going to be your safeguard against the centralized central plan movement. Okay, guys? That is very important to understand and decipher. At the beginning, we used to say digital currency because it was digital, but unfortunately, now that the central bank are using the term digital currency, we have to get back to our proudest word of cryptocurrency will equal digital sovereignty. Digital currency will equal fiat money transfer into a digital, a transformation will be the same shit. So anyways, let's call it the uh, physical fiat money stock market exchange they are due right now for the, uh, again, I repeat it, the trend within, I said within, we don't have a specific date. We won't be goofy like this. We are not prophesizing anything. We are not predicting anything. But when we look at the trend since 1929, the way capitalist tried to regulate itself. Now we had a five years break with a three years extension on a regular correction. We have a small correction back in 2018, I think, but it was too much. And let's see now, even with this pandemic, we never seen this high marketplace, okay, on the stock market. And then the crypto went up, up, up. Of course, we had a correction right now. A lot of people were predicting a 50% correction. We had right now, so far, it's a 20% correction on the crypto exchange. But that's the thing, guys. You could play bingo, you could play casino, for a while with the Dutch coin, with the uh, semi coins and everything. But you gotta be fast, you gotta be full time on your screen and monitor it. You bought it at two, three, five cents, they go up at one dollar, you sell them. Okay? But this is a risky business. The Bitcoin, you could hold them, but me, I'm using it 
for the last five years, I pay other things. I pay, by the way, my crypto.com blockchain website. I should say my dot crypto website. With it, I make a lot of transactions with my Bitcoins already. I try to find those who accept it. So, of course, if you hold it too long, and if you were not in the space to purchase them like me at 350 something back in 2009, I couldn't understand for you, you pissed off. But that's part of any, any investment. That's part of if you're a risk taker or not. And right now I'm gonna decline a lot of coaching because, and I even start the process with some people that will decline the, the pursuit of it because um, now not only the exchange, it's hard to exchange. When I say exchange, including the buy and sell of Bitcoin between fiat money, and then after the other, but for those who are fearing the correction of 50%, if you hold anything else than Bitcoin and Ethereum, and again, I'm not a financial advisor, but from my experience in 2014 and 2016, you better back it up by Bitcoin, and I will say that, even Bitcoin Cash. At 1,800 they were last time I checked. So just like be very careful because they will try to push other cryptocurrency to divert you from the real movement of decentralization Okay, and this culture of blockchain security and sovereign data that we could make it together. This is not the business. The business is really all the time, actually. If you play the currency exchange of the fiat money, and you say, "Oh, I bought a lot of pesos. I bought my land here in Tulum or in Cancun with my and pesos instead of U.S. dollars." Well, it's like when you tell me, "Oh, I bought a lot of." Uh, Dogecoin at one dollars because it's going to be up at two dollars next week and then it's crash back to five cents. So your dollars for every Dogecoin, you have to understand that you bought them at one dollar is now it's back to five cents. You're just a fucking loser. For a Bitcoin, let's say that you you bought a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin at fifty-five thousand dollars. Of course you lost 20% of your, it's right now, you may worth $800. And you want to be an older. And now it's hard to exchange, it's hard to buy and sell. Okay. But try to see if your next hotel accept Bitcoin. There's a lot of hotel on Playa del Carmen. Even in the mainstream Playa del Carmen, they will accept Bitcoins. I showed you on my show two weeks ago, a beach in Salvador that accept Bitcoin. So there's more to it. And anyways, with all these uh, COVID, yo, COVID free, COVID path that's coming up, the way we're gonna travel will require alternative way and responsible tourism instead of mass tourism. So of course, we will have to avoid Europe at all costs. So we're gonna go into countries that accept us without any condition of a negative test or COVID pass. Plus they will accept Bitcoin. Yes, Bitcoin. They will never ever accept XRP from Ripples. Those are bastards. They will never ever accept any other coins. So maybe Litecoins. Maybe if, I, if I'm really, really polite and objective. Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. You'll be able to exchange with them. All the rest is null shit coins. Okay, guys. So I don't know if the 70 people right now, 17, sorry who are watching on YouTube, if you have some questions, if the time is yours right now because I'm going to close that show. It's been 54 minutes that I'm rambling. So remember, there is no greener way of managing and cooling a server. So if Bitcoin is bad for the environment with the mining operation, well, let's shut down Facebook, let's shut down Google, let's shut down Microsoft, Let's shut down Amazon. Let's shut down Netflix. Yes, guys. Because these guys are consuming a lot more energy than even one or three lab of Bitcoin miner in Colorado. Secondly, the transparency of Bitcoin is about the movement. 
but as decentralized it is, no one can knock at any door to request all of your transaction lists. If you are goofy enough to print it or to whatever things on your wallet, on your ledger wallet, and to give it to any institution, this is your problem. But as long as you never share it yourself, nobody in the Bitcoin movement or the blockchain in large movement will be able to be knocked it out. Nobody, as I said, of course some exchange as Binance and Bitcoin, I won't trust them. Coinberry in Canada, I won't trust them. But again, there, the transaction they might see is you purchase some Ethereum and Bitcoin and you put it into your wallet. So if you're smart enough, you have more than one wallet and you, you know, that's, that's what you have to do. So you have to, to also be a sovereign, independent, autonomous individual to make sure that you are keep saving yourself first. So don't blame it to the other guy who act you or who provided to the interest. So again, I will, I will never trust Coinbase in Binance about your transaction list. But it's not all your transaction list. It's only your buy and sell and some of your exchange. But your wallet and your ledger and your hardware ledger from the Bitcoin movement, never ever. So the transparency fake news of last week, it's about it. Okay. And the third point to conclude, after the green attack, oh, it's not green to have Bitcoin. Oh, Bitcoin is not transparent. Oh, and uh, the third thing is, there is no conspiracy. Cryptocurrency is not digital currency anymore. I'm sorry because the term, the coin term, term for digital currency will be attached to fiat money banking, central banking system. And so there will be U.S. coin, U.S. digital coin. Chinese Yuan coin, so these will be central bankers spying on you, knowing everything, like the credit card statement that will be everywhere. It's already kind of there, but now they're gonna force maybe it a little bit more, and they will try to make you think that you own some kind of cryptocurrency, but you don't own nothing. It's nothing mine, it's nothing about the equation, it's nothing about the blockchain decentralized movement. It will be just a better way for them to control even more uh, your transaction list and your Vivian. So on that beautiful Agile Launcher for Business Agility, Agile Enthusiasts and Decentralized Enthusiasts, I'm inviting you tomorrow about the same time, 5 Central, 6 p.m. Eastern. We're going to test the watch party for the greater reset and the people reset that we're going to have next Tuesday already, May 25th. And I remind you that you could watch the entire thing on the, the Greater Reset altogether, the alternative to the Davos Gang, the Davos Mafia of the Great Reset. It's the people reset, it's the people with a lot of new ideas to create decentralized and distribute community all around the world uh, to have another ways uh, uncovering and togetherness, new ways of dealing and togetherness with five domain and of course, uh, the one of how do we work together that is really important for the core of the business agility movement because we'd like to transform the world of work for a better worker experience and customer experience. So this is why I put the dot together. We need business agility to help you thrive in your endeavor for any kind of business, any kind of market. So join me tomorrow for the test because yes, Agile, we test things to provide you the best guest experience. So on that, if you like this video, give me a like. If you're new to the channel on YouTube, please subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you on my Friday Live Agile next Friday. Because, we, yes, we are Monday. It's because we've been knocked out by uh, an outrage, an, out, an outage last Friday. So that's why we repeat the show today. And, uh, and this week, we're going to launch also two other premiere on our YouTube channel. Agile Launch for Business Agility channel. So stay tuned because we're going to talk about other of our things that we offer to the community and to other people. So until then, be well and remember we are beautiful, we are powerful, we are free, and this is why we're going to win. This is why we are winning 
and I love you in like cash. See you soon on Zoom and even sooner on Room this summer. Cheers, guys.